Hello again, I am Blunty with another product review. Well, that's a lie. It's not a product review, it's a review of several products that are all related. I'm going to be reviewing this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. All sent in for review from a website called Sugaba Store. That's probably SGP, now that I think about it. And three of the five products I'll be looking at today from Sugaba Store are screen protectors. And the reason I'm looking at three different screen protectors from the same place is because they all strike a different balance between uh, hardness, between uh, clarity and uh, resistance to smudge and fingerprints. And I've got three different ones here for three different devices, iPad, Samsung Galaxy S and iPhone 4. And I've done that specifically so I can have all three of them on devices at the same time so I can do a proper direct comparison. It is, however, worth noting that all three of these different types of screen protectors are available for a range of different devices. But before we get onto the review proper, a little bit of housekeeping, a little bit of background to my general attitude towards screen protectors. Historically, I've hated them. <laughs> when I had my first iPhone, which I had to import because I never sold the first version in Australia, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. When I had it, I bought a couple of different screen protectors to try with it, and they all had just things I hated. I, I, I used them for a day or two and I'm like, I can't stand this and I tore it off and threw it away. And, you know, they're, they're ugly. They're pains in the ass to apply. You always get air bubbles or they, they blur the screen a bit or you get that weird rainbow polarizing effect and it just makes it more difficult to look at. And I haven't bought them for years. And the reason I've got three of them here today is because I mentioned the Scuba store. <laughs> SG, I should stop calling that, sgp.com, sent them in for me to review so I didn't have to spend any of my own money on So I get to check these out for your benefit, on your behalf, without having to spend any of my money, and I'm okay with that. Bottom line is I'm looking at these products with a very critical eye because I don't like screen predictors that much, honestly. Now, all three of these are Japanese-made. They're called Steinhail, which doesn't sound very Japanese to me. It sounds kind of German, but there you go. I'm told they're made in Japan, but they're called Steinhail. And while the three different types do have some differences, they all have a couple of things in common, so we'll cover those first. They're optically enhanced hard films. They've all got around uh, 3 or 4 H hardness. If you know what that is, good for you. If you don't know what a H hardness scale is, you don't really need to know. Suffice to say, they're designed to be scratch-resistant, which is what you want from a protection film really. They are all designed for a dry application. Now if you've ever tried to put a screen protector on before, some of them come with you know, the little bottle of spray and you have to wet both surfaces and you apply it wet and as that as, as that liquid dries it becomes adhesive and all that sort of stuff. And It's just a monstrous pain in the ass to be perfectly honest. These ones all have a special uh, uh, adhesive which is a, a silicon adhesive which is a dry application so you don't have to wet this, you have to clean the surface of course, you don't want dust on there but you, you don't have to wet them down or anything like that and it becomes a huge pain in the ass and moisture on your device and all that sort of stuff. Ah. And apparently the nature of this adhesive makes it much, much harder to cause air bubbles in the application as long as you follow the instructions, apparently. So we'll be giving that a go. Let's look at the one for the Samsung Galaxy S first. Okay, so the one I've got here for the Samsung Galaxy S, it's known by a few different names in the States, where each different carrier has a slightly different version, they call them slightly different things, which is ridiculous. You know it as the Samsung Galaxy S, also known as the i9000. This is the anti-fingerprint film, so if you've got one of those devices and you're sick of wiping off fingerprints on it all the time, and you know, all these touchscreen devices do it, even if they've got special coatings to help prevent it, you do get fingerprints and smudges and all over that, and for some people that can be incredibly frustrating. This thing is designed to eliminate, or at the very least, reduce that, apparently. So as you can see, it comes with everything you need for the application. You get a nice little microfiber cleaning cloth so you can wipe away all the dust and bits and pieces and get rid of the smudges so you don't get anything trapped underneath the film when you're trying to apply it. And they actually give you two protective films. And this isn't this isn't a mispack. This isn't an, oh, the factory accidentally put two in or anything. They deliberately give you two. Because if you screw the first one up and you get an air bubble or a fold or it goes on weird or you've ruined it somehow, you get a second chance. And that is a brilliant idea in my book. Just having that extra film there as a second chance. If you apocalyptically screw it up the first time around, second chance. That's good. That's awesome. That is genius. Everybody who sells these things should be packing in two of those in every box. Okay, so the application is fairly straightforward. You clean it, you peel off half the backing, you sort of smooth it on there. You get a little rubber squeegee thingy that helps you uh, get it on there without, so you can squeeze out the air bubbles as you go. Take it nice and slow. Take it relaxed. Don't rush it. You've got all the time in the world. You want to get it right. And for all my, my built-in loathing of, of these screen protectors and stuff like that, this is the easiest application I've ever done. It is really simple, really straightforward. There's no buggering about it. You just 
applied on there the the adhesive the special silicon adhesive they've got on these things is really as you can uh, lift it up and it doesn't have a residue on your screen so you can lift it up and reposition it you gotta be careful so you don't get your own fingerprints underneath it on the adhesive and that's horrible and stuff like that but it is easy to lift up and reposition if you need to if you manage to screw it up now as you can see there I've got this this it's not quite an air bubble it's sort of a, a gap where the adhesive has it won't it refuses to attach properly it's just sort of bit around the side and it's gone all weird and no matter how hard I pound it with my fingernail or rub it with the squeegee I cannot get that to adhere properly and you know it's, it's not actually on the screen it's off to the side but it does annoy me so what I've done is actually gone for the second one because I couldn't get this one to fit I peeled it off threw it away and I attached the second one which did in fact, work perfectly, as you can see there. I'll see if I can get it to reflect the light. For there we go. There we go. There's the light. It's an absolutely flawless attachment there, which is lovely. And the put it. I don't know if you can tell the texture from the sound it makes in the microphone, but it's got almost a, a smooth, papery feel. It feels a little bit like uh, close to photo paper. Maybe no, it's not even as grippy as photo paper. It's it's tough to describe. But it's not the, the slick glass-like feeling that the screen used to have. It's very smooth, very slick. It's actually probably less grippy than the glass is using. The finger uh, glides over that very, very easily. And it's actually really, really like the feel of that. And you can tell that you've got the screen protector on there. You can see it's not... Well, it's, it's not soft or blurry or anything like that. I mean, you know, I can still read it crystal clear. But what you get, you can, uh, you can almost see the texture of the of the device itself and I, I wish I could show you on camera but it just doesn't come across a camera I tried but in person it's you know you will adjust to it very very quickly and you'll see through it but you know in sunlight or in, and even in in room lighting you can tell you've got one on but it doesn't impede being able to read anything on the screen and you know that's the trade-off you make for having a, a surface that just does not attract fingerprints I mean I can yeah, you can see that. Hardly any smudges. And if I did that just straight on the glass, that would be covered in finger grease by now. So that's a bit of a win. I actually really like that. Alrighty, up next we've got the Ultra Oleophobic Oil Resistant Coating Screen Thingy for the iPhone 4. Again, just like the anti-fingerprint one, you get the little microfiber screen cleaner. You get two screen protectors. So if you screw up the first one, you can take it all over again. And again application is very very easy slightly different this time because the protector is a lot thinner so you've got actually uh, uh, two layers to peel off there you've got a backing layer and a, a protection layer on the top that just helps it helps it retain a bit uh, a bit more stiffness so it's easier to apply then you peel that off once you're done this one collects fingerprints it will collect fingerprints where's my phone but because it's got that oleophobic uh, coating on it, it's much, much easier just to wipe them off. The benefit you get, as I said, is you get the scratch protection. And this is slightly less hard than the one for the Galaxy S. So it, uh, while it's much more scratch resistant than the raw screen, it will protect the screen anyway. Uh, so if you scratch it, just peel it off, replace it, your screen's still fine. The Retina display on the iPhone looks fantastic through it. There's no blurring, there's no softness, there's uh, there's no texture to it like you get on the one on the anti-fingerprint one with the Samsung. Uh, and it's fantastic. It does feel, uh, the, the feel beneath your fingers, it feels it feels slightly greasy. I mean, it's not greasy, but it feels slightly greasy. There's that slight smoothy grippiness to it, and it just it almost feels oily, which is really strange texture, and I haven't been able to get used to it, quite honestly. I've had it on the phone for a while now, and while I, I love the fact that there's that, that scratch protection on there, and if I wanted to sit it on a desk face down, I can, and, you know, I, I love having that extra sense of security. I mean, the iPhone's raw screen is supposed to be quite tough anyway but it never hurts to have an extra layer protection especially if you can see straight through it and it doesn't affect the optical quality of it but the feel of it i don't like i like the the feel of the anti-fingerprint one better but you know i'd have to try one with the retina screen to see how how much it affects that because i love the screen on this and it's one of the bi biggest selling points so yeah it's a trade-off that i wouldn't make and after this review i am going to peel off the protection uh, from this iPhone because yeah, I, I, I can't handle the feel. My, my OCD sits in it just doesn't feel right to me and it, it drives me insane. I, I can't have it. I will be keeping the screen protector, screen protector on the Samsung though because that's brilliant. All right, the last of the screen protectors is the crystal clear one for the iPad. Now, this one is basically the most optically clear of the three. They say you will never be able to tell that it's even on there and it's true. It's perfectly clear it looks like I haven't got one on there it looks just like the proper glass display and it feels 
mm, pretty damn close to the gunsmith. It's definitely got a better feel than the oleophobic one on the iPhone 4. So this one will be staying on my iPad because it gives it that screen protection and it doesn't, it doesn't have that weird feel. So I will be keeping this one on there because there is, there's no trade-off here. I mean, it's perfectly crystal clear. It's absolutely beautiful. It was easy to apply. I don't have a video of applying this one. You've already seen two of them. It was the same deal, basically. It's just bigger. Um, you didn't get two in this pack, though. You don't get a spare. You only get one chance to get it right in this case. And I've wound up with uh, uh, a little, one of those little bubble things. Not quite a bubble, because I can't see it on camera. I can't show you, but it's that th same thing I had with the with the Samsung, where it just won't adhere, but that's way off to the side. There's nowhere near the screen, and while it bugs me a bit, I you know I think I'd rather have protection than you know have my OCD go nuts every time I notice that sitting there. But now there were two other products, and the first one is on the back of my iPad, and if I can get it to catch the light just right, you might be able to see it's kind of a a leatherette backing to. It's not actually leather; it's all. You know, man-made materials and environmentally friendly, apparently, and it's very smooth and very thin. It goes on much like the screen protectors do, and it's just to, you know, <laughs> when they sent me this, I thought it was going to be horribly tacky. I thought, who would want the, the leather backing on the phone? That's going to look ridiculous, but it's got a really nice feel to it, and the, the iPad has that, you know, the, the aluminum metal back on it. It's kind of slippery and cold, and this is this is slightly grippy and it's not so cold anymore. I actually really like that. I'm not sure whether it's it screams class or screams tackiness because you know it's pretending to be leather or anything. But I quite like it. They even give you uh, a, a clear uh, little screen to stick over the cutout for the Apple, so you're protecting every bit of it, <laughs> which is it made me laugh. Just a clear little sticker that's exactly cut to to fit the Apple there. But anyway, that one's called the Skin Guard for iPad. It does come in a range of uh, colors as well, so you don't have to go for the black. You can get white or tan. I think there's a blue one. I forget. Check the website. You'll find the colors there. But the other thing, because it is so thin, it will fit into the dock perfectly fine. It's not going to impede your ability to sit it in the dock or anything like that, which is a good thing. I'm just telling you that now because I noticed it on the back of the box here. <laughs> now, the final product we're looking at from Sigibastore.com stop doing it, is uh, this, which is the Silk, Ultra Silk, it's Silk, but S-I-L-K-E, Silk, Soul Black case, and this is this is just uh, an iPhone case, basically, so I'll open it up there, as you can see, fairly normal looking iPad case, and it's got little uh, protrusions for the buttons there, and it's all lovely and smooth, and, you know, it's just a case, but it is a case that is really, really well made, there are no weird mold lines or anything like that. I mean, this is made with care. It's a good quality and it's uh, rubber silicon and it fits really, really easily. Let's we'll get around the corner there. See, there we go. It's designed to, ah, there we go, fit absolutely perfectly. Nice big cut out there in the back so you don't impede the camera or its flash. And I found you've got to be careful with some cases that sort of cut that too close. Some of them, uh, tend to impede the flash or ref reflect some of that flash back into the camera lens which can wash out your pictures and I've learned from uh, trying out a few different cases so far that that's something you've got to be really careful about but this has got a lovely big cutout for it so absolutely no problem there and the thing I like about this is you get the protection from a silicon case so it can take a little bit of a knock which is good you can sit on a surface and you know it's, it's you're not going to scratch up the back of your iPhone or anything like that but the thing I like about this, as opposed to most silicon or rubber cases that I've tried, and this is why I usually go for the hard case person, the plastic hard case is usually my preference because I don't like this about the silicon cases. They're too grippy. And when you go to pull them out of your pocket, they stick and they carry on and they get caught and, you know, start pulling at the corners and stuff like that. But this one has just a beautiful, soft, uh, matte texture to it. And it comes in and out of my pocket really, really easily. It's got a really lovely feel in my hand. What I don't like about this, however, is uh, just because of the nature of the way it fits, and I don't know, there we go, we'll try that for an angle, uh, it comes just over the edge there, so it doesn't impede the touch screen at all, which is great, but it also means because it's rubber, that it does this, and you'll find that in use, this might annoy you, because it's really easy just for that edge to flap about, coming in and out of your pocket or everything. I have, I've never accidentally pulled the case off when it's coming out of my pocket or anything. It's just those long sides, because there is so much slack in that silicon rubber, they tend to flap about when you're using it, and that I didn't like about it. But if you do want a rubber silicon case, just for that, that production, 
this is probably the one I'd recommend just because I like the texture of it. I love the smoothness of it. I love that it doesn't bug you or buggerize you about when you're coming in and out of your pocket. So that <laughs> is the range of stuff that Sugiba Store, sgpstore.com, have sent me for review. I'm a bit 50-50. I liked half of them very, very much, and the other uh, ones had slight problems that annoy me, but may not annoy you, depending on what you're looking for. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Blunting, and I will catch you next time. While I answer this phone call, that I suddenly realized I hadn't silenced my phone. Excuse me. Hello?